father had this saw, and this has been around for a very long time. When I was a kid, this was a saw that we used for firewood. Uh, Zoller's used to be a actually a top flight chainsaw and boat dealer. They sold Evinrude and um, Dur Duranautic boats. Duranautics, by the way, are built in uh, Marathon, New York, or used to be. They were aluminum boats. They were the best you could buy in their time. But lo and behold, when I get up to my mom and dad's, my dad says, can you please take this saw? Because he no longer can run it. So obviously the answer was yes, I'll take it and get it back running. This is actually a quite nice Homelight XL12. This is going to be a short video, I hope. And what I want to discuss today is some logic behind your first chainsaw. Which direction should you go? And I'm going to mix that in with some fishing. I've been sort of developing this video here now for a week or two, and I haven't quite figured out the best way of, of going forward with a discussion. So anyway, your first saw. And the biggest question to ask is, first of all, what do you intend to do? Now, there's two parts of that. One is, what do you intend to do from a logical perspective, you know, the work or the task? But the other is, where do you want to go with the saws afterwards? But what I mean by that is, is the saw is entree into other activities that might be fun, interesting, and uh, that are not readily obvious when you first get into the chainsaw thing. Now, I'm sure that's not a, a concept that many people have have brought to the discussion. But if you look at the last few years and the growth of the hobby, there's people who get into it. They learn about ways of exploring the hobby online and decide to go a little further into the hobby side of things, not just the work or the task side of things. So I'm going to try to make this discussion a little interesting based on the premise that where a person goes after they first experience some saw work is not always obvious. Okay? I think I see a tree down. So, what we have here is a couple of actually legitimate first choices, depending on what a person wants to do. It may not look like it to the so-called expert, especially that one. But let's break this down into some classes of work. Um, first and foremost, a lot of the work that is done is simply cleanup work or yard work. And... That could be a storm blew a branch down. It could be maintaining a fence line. It could be maintaining just some trees and stuff in your yard. And you don't need 80-something cc's of horsepower. You really don't. Although that would do the work, you don't need that. And some people just simply don't want to bother with it. In the past, the options were what they called uh, homeowner or occasional use saws. And... Bob and I have gone through that discussion a couple of times where you have the, the price point saws, like you have the $150 saws. And I'm going to say right up front, I don't recommend any of those, period. And there's a lot of reasons why. And we had set the premise that you need to spend about $300 or more for a chainsaw if you want to get something that's a legitimate tool. I'm going to stick with that. So... I'm going to just outright say, in my humble opinion, I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's a one-time deal or occasional use deal. You're going to be better off going with either, and this is the first concept, a saw like, like this one right here, which is a Husqvarna 120i battery saw, or 
jump ahead in the $300 range, $350 range, and get a legitimate gas-powered chainsaw. The first thing I want to unpack is the differences between the battery-powered saws for the lower-end work and the gas-powered saws for the lower-end work. And it's not as obvious as you might think. The definition of wind in that class of saw isn't always power and speed. Sometimes the amount of work that has to get done is small enough, it really doesn't matter. There's other things that come into play. And the occasional use person with a lot of smaller type work, and I'm talking, you know, trees like this one right here, you know, brushwork, not timber. This actually makes the most sense by far. And the reason is you don't have to deal with just a whole lot of issues that a gas powered saw forces you to consider. You don't have to worry about storing gas. You know, you don't have to worry about the gas going bad after a period of time. You don't have to worry about things like choke to get them started and all these little procedures that are required to get a, a gas powered saw start, started that may not be readily obvious to the, the person at hand. The electric powered saw is just simple. You know, you have a battery, you turn it on, you pull the trigger, it runs. There's no gas, there's no choke, there's no warm up, there's none of that. You just pull the trigger, it runs. When you release the trigger, it stops. Now, of course, it has chain brake and safety features. We'll get into that later. And the only fluid that you have to worry about on these things is bar oil. That's it. Nothing else. No gas, no gas to leak, no gas to go bad, no gas with alcohol in it to rot rubber parts and the fuel lines and the carburetors and all that stuff that plagues the gas powered saws. So the marketplace and the technology is beginning to come together where these really are the best choice for the first time saw user who has to do stuff, you know, the smaller type work around the yard. Even an occasional big branch, you'll get through it. You may not get through it quickly, but it's better to work your way through with a saw like this if you're not a saw geek or a saw fanatic than to go spend the, the money required to get a gas saw to do that kind of work. It'll get it done. It may not get it done as fast as you want, but, but it will get done. I guess the first concept and point that I want to make is for the vast majority of the homeowners and the occasional use saw applications, these battery powered saws have really come into the market and really have, I think, taken over that low end side of the saw world. They're the best choice by far, not because of what they do 
and not because of the, how powerful they are, because they're still going to get out cut by a gas saw, but because of the things they don't do and the things you don't have to deal with. So, now this Husqvarna 120i, I think is awesome. And the reason is this, is you'll see in some of our prior videos, we actually did work with it. It's a legitimate chainsaw. It actually will cut wood and it'll cut it fast enough you can get a job done. We were getting 20 minutes or so on the battery, maybe a little more depending on the work. And that's in the high speed mode. But the biggest point that I want to bring to the table is that's a $250 option. Now, um, the harp on the $150 saw option, this is still a lower cost, believe it or not, over a period of time option because you don't have to deal with the gas. It doesn't take too many tanks of gas to go right past the dollar difference in the initial cost. You don't have to deal with a dealer or anything else in maintenance. You don't have to deal with air filters, spark plugs, rotted fuel lines, all the stuff we've mentioned before. So as time goes on, it very quickly overcomes the upfront cost, the upfront $100 difference in, in the initial price of a saw like that versus, say, a pull-in or another low-cost gas saw option. These things are just, I think, uh, I think they're amazing. I think for what they are, if I was to recommend a saw for, you know, a homeowner, uh, I would, as I said before, absolutely recommend that product right there. And of course, there's others on the market as well, but this is the one I'm familiar with. And I was able to perform functions with this, so I know how it works. It works quite well. So that's the first part of the discussion. Best saw for the homeowner is going to be something like that. Now, the downside of an electric saw like that is that's just what it is. You know, if you get into tinkering on, on uh, motors and things like that, that's just not going to trip your trigger. Although I can tell you as a person who's an absolute saw geek, this is probably the best truck saw I've ever had because I can sit in the back seat and it won't leak. You know, just a lot of things about that saw just make it right for me. As a, as a farmer, recognizing its limitations, I still think that's one of the best options for me, you know, in a general, in the truck, you know, open up a trail, cut down a branch, cut up a branch type saw, okay? Now, if, on the other hand, you do like playing with motors, that just opens up a whole nother discussion. And that's what I mean by what happens after you've done your job. Is there other things that might uh, be interesting to you in the future? And while the electric saw may not trip that trigger, it might. I mean, you might want to get into solar-powered things and get a bunch of panels and try to get off the grid. I mean, that's, a, that's something a person can do and have fun with. But if you want to get back to the professional roots, the history of saws, the history of motors, now, now the, the best first saw begins to change because it's not just task-oriented and it's not just convenience-oriented. Um, other things have played into the picture, things that you might find interesting, and after you've done your job, you might want to continue to explore. Sometimes a used old pro saw is the best first saw. There's going to be a lot of expertise online, and sure, there's going to be a steep learning curve, and absolutely you have to get your PPEs to be safe, but now you've done your job, you've got basically something that can turn into a hobby, you know? And as out of the box it may seem, finding an old pro saw that strikes your interest, be it steel or Husqvarna or some other brand that you just happen to find interesting, home light, that might not be a bad choice. But you have to go into it with eyes open, recognizing it's a steep curve. The next phase of that is, is learning how to get parts and getting it to run and having some mechanical skills. So that may not be a bad choice, you know young fellow coming up out of school goes to logging class or goes to a forestry type program and gets really interested into forestry and the history and all that well coming up with a 281 or 288 or 272 or something like that um, yeah you're not going to spend a whole lot of money it's a third the price of a brand new saw in the same class there's still parts available for them although that parts supply is is drying up but now you have a hobby as well as a saw that can do work. So yeah, is that is that logical? Probably not. A lot of of uh, 
compulsive, illogical thought goes into that, but it's it's legitimate. There's people who just like doing that kind of thing. So, and in that case, the best first saw or the best saw for a person who wants to go there is a, is an older pro level saw, not an older homeowner saw, but a pro level saw. You know, if you're going to get into it, you're going to get into the history. Um, you want to find a some camaraderie online dive right into the professional level stuff it's just like with the motorcycles you dive into the racing machines because those are the thoroughbreds the definition of win is if he puts it to the left side of that tank not much that matters but the saw is good to, to the left side one foot away if he does that he's he's a sharpshooter of your, of your of your tank left side not right side you point it to the right well you're going to make me send it against this lean ain't you just a little bit all right These, as compared to these older ones, the reason you buy these is because you want to make a living or you have a lot of work and you have a good dealer, okay? So these saws right here are pro-level saws and I don't recommend those as a first saw for a person who wants to get into the hobby, not at all. This would be the first saw for a person who wants to make a living cutting wood. The 562, the 550, and the upcoming coming uh, and the upcoming 572 are new generation saws. You need to have a decent dealer nearby. There's a lot of support issues that go along with the new saws, and for that reason, for a hobbyist to go tinker, um, they're not so much fun because you require the common service tool to do firmware updates and to get a look inside what's happening in the carburetor or stuff like that. So these aren't as much fun for the hobbyists who like to tinker, where the last generation 300 series and the generation before that 200 series, they're a lot more fun to build and tinker with. So, but for a guy who's going to be out in the woods, these things have evolved to the point where they're very reliable. You don't have to worry about a lot of things like um, changing temperatures and changing the tune to match. There's a lot of stuff you don't have to worry about with those. So for the professional, you know, these newer class saws are actually an advantage, even over the much heralded old, older ones. So we've got three classes of people here. You've got the occasional use person who's probably not going to get interested in the forestry and the saws. You've got the person who's interested in motors and a little bit of history and likes to tinker. And you've got a person who is a landscaper or um, some level of forestry work and has to go out and make a living. And the answer to the best first saw is different for each one, in my humble opinion, most humble opinion. Where, yeah, I mean, if you're a really good mechanic and you have a good source of parts, you can take these older saws and actually do some legitimate work. 
Um, what I found over the last 10 years, especially with the people who I support, they don't want to mess around with that stuff. If they're out there trying to make money, that's what they want to do is go out, not worry about the saw, go cut, not have to worry about tune. And the new saws actually are an advantage over some of the older older pro saws, even some of the, the much heralded ones. So three different requirements. So where does that guy fit in, the 450? Rancher saw is doing the kind of work that ranchers do. And in this case, well, there's a tree across the farm road here. Uh, I don't think nature took it down, but something did. Another couple hundred bucks are into these. The kind of difference you get with the price change, it's more about power to weight ratio. If you gotta hang on to a saw for a long period of time, the guy's working eight hours a day, or he's a farmer who's got a lot of, of firewood to do, or a lot of uh, uh, fence line, the higher performance pro saws, they actually are worth the money because they'll have better anti-vibe, they'll have better power, things get done quicker, and there's less stress on the on the user than, than the homeowner saws. These will be a little bit heavier, they won't have quite as much horsepower, and while perfectly adequate from a pure power standpoint, at the end of the day, more work is going to get done with a saw like this. And I guess that's the break point. If it doesn't really matter, and like I said, it's a, an occasional once a year, twice a year deal, there's no reason why a Husky 450 or 460 isn't the right choice for a guy. It's not a bad saw. But the very second you start getting months of work in, you got to start considering these things. They're going to last longer. You know, they're going to do more work. And that's really the difference. Now, we can get into a big technical discussion about the construction differences, the clamshell versus the conventional and the magnesium versus the plastic. But I want to keep it kind of light in this video. I'm not going to go there. We've done that in prior videos. But suffice to say... Bottom line, if you're a pro, 562, the 572 when they come out, 555, they were designed for that kind of work, you know, and they are worth the extra money. So what have we done? Let's see if I can summarize what I've done. You've got four or five different classes of potential saw buyers for their first saw. And again, I think this really covers the most ground for most people. And the price point, I would pick one of these over a small, cheap, gas-powered chainsaw every time. Buy another battery, you know, change batteries out after a half an hour, it's like adding gas, you know. I guess a way of, of defining the performance envelope is four to six inches and less. You know, that's the size of wood that that thing can handle. And of course it depends on whether it's soft or hardwood. So, by far the most people will find that their best first saw. 
the guy has been online, he gets interested in the, in the hobby and the history. There's a whole variety of older pro saws out there that are rebuildable, and some of them in good condition. I happen to like the 200 series and some of the 300 series Husqvarna's just simply because of the parts availability. And yeah, you can come up with a very capable saw with an original edition 372 or 272 or, you know, there's a whole bunch of saws that really fit that. And you have a pro level saw when you're done. Now, I understand that's a fringe, and that's not most people. And then there's the person who needs to make a living with a saw. Well, they make these for a reason. And then the person who has a larger firewood he has to deal with. And then you have to get back to the gas saws. And then it's a real toss-up between, you know, whether you go to the pro saws or you jump into these. And I think the dividing line for me on this is... Both these saws will cut an awful lot of firewood, you know? But I think the dividing line for me is how much time you're going to spend with a saw on a given task. If you're going to be spending months and hours a day, the pro saws are definitely worth the effort. If you're going to be doing it for maybe a couple of weeks for a few hours a day, then I think that class of saw is probably the best first saw for you. So, anyway... This is all humble opinion, and of course all this goes right along with, with making sure you have PPEs, a good helmet, and of course with the electric you don't need the earplugs, but having a good set of chainsaw pants or chaps is just absolutely mandatory for me, you know. If you don't have those, it's like riding motorcycles naked, you know. You're just asking for problems. So, I hope that's been of use. I'm going to put up some videos about saw survival. Basically, now you have your first saw. What kind of things, what kind of things do you have to pay attention to, both in the operation of the saw, but also the maintenance of the saw? That'll come next. But this is the first of the series, and I want to go fishing, so I'm going to end this video right about now.